You've been boning up on happiness yeah. and uh, the well-being of people in this incredible study. Tell me about it, because it, it started a long time ago. It's brilliant. Fact. Yeah, no, we, we wonder, don't we, how to be happy and how to live the good life? And it's a question we all have, you know. And scientifically, they're trying to ask the question, what is it that would make you happy in your life? And this study began in 1938. They followed 700 men for decades, right, and measure their lifestyle, their habits, questionnaires, their health was checked. And finally, they've come to a couple of bottom lines as to what you should do in your life to, for you to lead a more content life, shall we say. But obviously, it's very complicated. There's many, there's many variables. Many, many variables. And many of the people who started the original study uh, who were participants as young men, and you can tell me in a moment how they selected their young men, but they're, they're gone. Yeah. But they then embarked on talking to their offspring. They did. As the men got married, there were 700 men in Harvard, by the way. Now, no women, because there were no women in Harvard at that time, you see, yeah. so they couldn't recruit women. So 700 men were selected. Young men, 18, 19, 20 years of age, and they followed them for all these decades and tried to figure it out. Now, as they got married, and they included their spouses and then their children. So they end up with 1,300 extra people joined the study. And then they were criticised, actually, for it being a select group. Like These are very privileged people. Mm-hmm. So they got 500 men from a, a lower-income part of Boston, kind of as a control group, just to compare things like affluence and stuff. Yep. So in the end, it's, it's highly rated scientifically. OK, so it stands the test. It stands the, the test, test, yeah, precisely. Yeah. Um, one of the participants... Didn't make it. Strikingly, JFK, he was a student in 1938 in Harvard and he was asked to be one of the people on the study. So they followed him until sadly his demise. You know, he was one of the participants. And again, so what they did was every five years, there was a big health check on the men, right? And every two years, a detailed questionnaire. How's your life going, basically? Are you coping with things? Your level of anxiety? All those, a very complicated questionnaire. And again, credit to them because it was a very detailed questionnaire to assess their overall level of contentment. And JFK filled it in every, every two years and, and had his health check. do we have that information? No, they, they haven't broken it down in terms of you know, what the traits and so on of individual people because there's privacy issues there but but he, he was a, an enthusiastic participant he spoke about it himself yeah. isn't this wonderful this is going on we might learn how to design our society you see to help people live a happier life Okay so the, the questionnaire very very complex uh, measuring I mean you talk about relationships Yep absolutely um, yeah. work happiness yep. um, health yep. dietary you know all of those all things, of those things. Everything. everything everything their fears their hopes their disappointments their accomplishments was all covered in the in the detailed questionnaire and then their habits were they smokers or drinkers for example their occupation now what fascinates me is one becomes president let's face it that's a big success story many become business people some fail in business some don't you know now, given some their doctors, origins they're all going to Harvard but it's high level it's high level stuff. stuff so you'd expect yeah. them all to be high achievers yeah doctors lawyers you know it's a snapshot of, of, the, of the human condition if you will and, and how Harvard graduates end up I suppose now I remember some of them become down and outs some get schizophrenia some become alcoholics because obviously the, the 700 kind of represent society and their life course then is, is quite variable between them all and, they, and that, how that was taken did into they account. pass the baton from researcher to researcher because obviously researchers moved on retired died themselves yep. because if you're looking at maybe 35 year old researchers researching kids who are 18 or 19 you know they're going to be a decade and a half ahead of the posse yep. so they're not going to last the survey Four separate directors, they called them, of this study. Exactly as you say, the first person would have died during it. Another guy takes over. The current two directors, they've written a big report. Why I've come across is they've now issued a big report on this. And the current two directors have taken all the data and kept it going, basically. I mean, in, in academic circles, it's amazing, by the way, because obviously we're very jealous of each other's achievements. But the, the people were, were putting their hands up, oh, I'll take over that because it's so robust, you see. Yeah. So there have been four separate leaders of yeah. this all and through those decades. did they publish before? Or they is had, this yeah. They they've been released. Regularly. They've been releasing little little facts here and there, and little pu- publications were issued. You know, so the whole thing was going on over, over the. It's a great source of publications for academics, by the way. You <laughs> see, so they like doing that. You know. But this latest report is the most comprehensive ever of, of what okay. they found. Really. So you've teased us long enough. What is the secret of happiness? Well, well, the surprise. They said this was a surprise. It's not about money at all, right? Wealth does not correlate to happiness at all. You but see. If, if they're all more or less wealthy, you know. well, no, so, some of them became broke. Some some of the businesses failed. You see, so they could factor that into it. You know. So it's not about money. It's not about your flash car or your house or even your occupation. None of those were predictors of happiness. In the end, that's obvious, by, by the way. You, you and I would agree it's, it's human relationships. That's the single most important factor for happiness. And loneliness is a killer. That's the other big conclusion from this. People who ended up lonely, and they might have been lonely because they focused on their careers or 
didn't look after their patients. They had terrible outcomes. They often had drink problems. They were dying younger and they were reporting real negative stuff in the questionnaires. You know, so the, so the number one thing is good, good, good friendships and relationships are critical for your personal happiness. Now, how about divorces? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they, well, that can be good. They also found toxic relationships are negative. So, so get, stuck, get rid of the, the other half. If it's toxic, yep. if it's negative, or, or even, them. even one of your friends, so it doesn't have to be the other half. If you're in a toxic relationship, that's a big negative. Because it drags you down. It makes you unhappy, basically. So it's, it's, divorce could be a good solution for some people. But overall, it does suggest marital happiness is a huge predictor of the overall thing. The great study, Pat, was in, in, when you're 50, if you're in a good relationship with your spouse, that was a strong predictor of your health when you were 80. As, wow. as better than cholesterol levels. Now, we all know about high cholesterol is damaging. You yeah. know? But if you were in a toxic marriage at the age of 50, that was more damaging to your health than high cholesterol, for example, you see. And the other example they had was um, it's worse than being a smoker or a drinker. As, and they're big risk factors for disease. So, so the, toxicity in your relationships is more damaging to your health than all of these yep. traditional no-nos. Yeah, precisely, yes. And, and again, because the numbers were so strong, especially the, they were measuring cholesterol in these men all the time as yep. well, you see. And there would have been men with high cholesterol who were 50. But if they were in a good relationship, that was less of a risk factor, if you know what I mean. That was kind of, so the good relationship was a protector. They reckon it's because of resilience. If you have a supportive spouse or friend, it doesn't have to be a spouse, you're more resilient for the vicissitudes of life. And all these men were having troubles, they were health issues, but if you were in a strong relationship and a good network around you, you could cope with that. A second one, Pat, was pain. People who had arthritis or types of pain, they could tolerate it much more if they were in a happy relationship. It just shows you the, the, the beneficial effects of these relationships. So what are the lessons then uh, for us all, uh, yep. for society as a whole? I mean, uh, you know, people who choose their mates through Tinder or whatever... Yeah, um, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Matchmakers, do they? You know, it's tough. Ha- how it's are we to tough, tailor society yeah, yeah. to give people a happier, longer life? Well, in the book, the latest book is called "The Good Life." By the way, is the title of the book. There's a questionnaire you can fill in. You can list all the people who you're close to and rate them in various ways <laughs> and then figure out which ones to ditch. That seems to be part of it, you know. Or the, a very important thing, you've got to nurture relationships. They show that very, you've got to work at it, you know. It's not just the case you're married, you can just take the foot off, you've got to really work at it. The, the, one of the things was if you go on autopilot in a relationship, that's a big negative, you see. So again, they, 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 one of the conclusions is keep, keep working at the relationships. The other thing is make sure you reach out to a friend. In other words, go for a drink, go for a walk. And many of us get reluctant as we get older. Always try to keep your social network I yeah. suppose is the word alive is, is the big right. advice so if you buy the book The Good Life and if you fill in the form don't show it to anybody that's right, that's right. <laughs> keep it quiet it depends, on, it depends on what it tells you you got to be careful exactly <laughs> right. people will be looking to see what their rating what their score be. is yeah exactly all right so this will continue this oh it will absolutely but they're now following up with the children you see and the other parts of the families now they're extending it even further so we'll see, see if this continues to, to give us the same conclusions well you're a man with uh, always a smile on your face Luke so you must be doing something right very good it's our relationship Pat that keeps me going you, know? <laughs> you and I both <laughs>